Hi, Roy here on my channel Roy Reads Anything and going to talk a bit about Occult Detective October. So that's the month celebrating occult detective fiction fantastic event devised by MJ with a bunch of co-hosts of which I am one. And I've been a bit slow on the video making and the reason is I just things have been going bizarrely awry. You know, if there was... If there was such a thing as an entity, a bit like a poltergeist, that stopped things being quite finished, the way it just sort of inserted some kind of last minute missing element or obstacle, then that's what's been besetting me, really. So things have been delayed and swapped around, but it's all going to be good. And I think I'm just about catching up with myself now. So the first week of Occult Detective October had a prompt, which is reading stuff pre-1960. So you don't have to do the prompts at all. It's just about reading, reading some cool stuff with occult investigators in it in some way. But I thought I would do the pre-1960. In fact, I'll go right back to 1897 when John Bell master of mysteries also known as the ghost exposer had a series in um, this magazine Cassell's family magazine and I thought there were six stories and I have this collection it's a bound set of the magazines with six stories in it so I thought this was the whole lot and that I could make like a vlog reading episode by episode and talking about cool other stuff that might be in the magazines so you got illustrations and everything um, but then discovered there's actually seven stories so I need another you know another magazine very difficult or another one of these bound sets which I've bought but the eBay seller is on holiday so uh, I've got to wait for this so I can't really finish my vlog until sometime in November. So the first week is going to be late. It's going to be the, the last week, but it'll be worth waiting for perhaps. Uh, so that was, that was, that was week one. Then the week two prompt is a post-1960 works. So I went right up to date with John Linwood Grant's latest book, An Unkindness of Shadows, uh, by Lethe Press. Uh, but realised while I was reading it, it would actually do a little bit better for the, the week three prompt, which is diverse author or character. So uh, basically the setup here is uh, this chap, Justin Margrave, is in the present day an elderly art critic and he comes to visit two younger guys who run a um run an art gallery and it's a sort of scheherazade type setup he's telling them stories back in the 70s and early 80s that's how it unfolds so it's kind of like it is a novel i'd call it a novel but constructed of a series of interlinked short stories uh so all, everyone I've mentioned so far is gay, basically. So it's a, uh, it's kind of a, it's got that LBTQIA element to it. So great for whatever. I mean, the thing is about this, it's flipping excellent. I really, really rate this very highly. Um, blurb on the back, got some high praise. So you got Ramsey Campbell saying it's a substantial contribution to the literature of the uncanny delectably written often disturbing sometimes chilling but also poignant ultimately very moving so i'd agree with all of that so basically this justin margrave guy who's been an art critic you know long term he's got all these stories about artists and whatnot but he's kind of got a knack for falling into situations that involve some kind of uncanny or occult element so although he's not a occult detective of the kind who was says yes here's my card i'm an occult detective he 
is sort of brought in by usually acquaintances to help resolve some situation that's got some kind of weird element to it. Um, it's really immersive. I think the period, you know, the, I was kind of around in that period. I'm not, I was not quite as old as the protagonist, but um, I can tell authentic sort of 70s, 80s vibes when I experience them. In this case, some of it's very sort of seedy and grubby and, and a little bit disturbing. Uh, so we, we like it doubly. Um, and there's a huge variety of things as well. I mean, quite um, some of the best stories you could sort of say folk horror if you wanted to bring that in. You know, they're sort of involving, uh, you know, Arthur Macken type entities within the land, that sort of thing. Um, the link with the art world, and it's not just art, it's also sort of artefacts is his expertise. So that's how he might be involved with, um, you know, some kind of weird objects. Um, it reminded me of two things, really. If you imagine, think of those great sort of 70s BBC type plays or series, things like... Um, the owl service or the stone tape you know it could be like a lost one of those because i mean those you might not see anything like that but those were could be really disturbing um because in a way you've got a sort of a double hauntology here because the 70s itself is this kind of lost era and then when you've got things of incredible ancientness um kind of um you know bursting through into our into that contemporary reality you've got something that's even older still uh, so that's really good and you've got the whole the sort of um, you know what it's like being a gay man at that time when it was uh, you know very very difficult uh, so uh, loads going on huge variety of stories I, I, I sort of believed it not in the sense that like this stuff must be literally true but in sort of um i don't know i guess just the authentic feel of the setting and the character building and the world building and you know just sort of um it, it sort of felt very um yeah, i can only say real which means kind of impactful so um yeah an unkindness of shadows fantastic um i would even go a little bit further <laughs> and say that the children of angles and corners um i can't think of a better modern weird story that i have read so uh, so that's been good for which whichever week of occult detective october it is um which leaves me obviously looking for a modern piece to read and i lucked out there as well with ghost talker a gas lamp ghost mystery. So this novel by Bird Nash is the first in a series uh, about a character called Madame Chalamet. I mean, this is, it's loaded with fun. It's a riot, really well written, really pacey. Not a long book, but tons happens. It's sort of set in a, I guess you'd call it a sort of alternative Paris a sort of alternative 19th century Paris. So there are aristocrats and horse-drawn cabs and that kind of thing. People don't really believe in the supernatural, at least they don't want to. So the ghost talker profession, it's very, you know, there are charlatans, but Madame Chalamet isn't one. Um, but they're viewed very sort of um, dismissively. So we again, you've got outsiderhood, but the character is great. She's narrating it. She's witty. Um, like I say, lo loads of events. The supernatural stuff's really fun. I could I couldn't believe it's all going to wrap up in one book, but it sort of does. But with some longer mysteries as well. So this is a series I'm keen on sticking with. So. Uh, yeah, Gas Lamp Mysteries, Gas Lamp Ghost Mystery Series, Bird Nash. First one, a Ghost Talker. Uh, so that was a nice discovery. Um, I also, along the way, read a sort of a occult detective adjacent novel called Cecilia de Noel 
by Lenoy Falconer, a real name Mary Hawker. So this is a ghost story. It's, it's uh, 19th century. I'm really, really, I'm sort of also reading this for Victober, where one of the prompts is uh, a book that's to do with religion. So I actually came across this in a, a cult detective context. It was in a an article by Indu Ori about um, female investigators in end of the century fiction and how they how they differed from the uh, from the male ones. So it's kind of always been on my radar. Um, I'd say it's it's much much more a sort of fable about religion and Christianity than is anything else. It certainly isn't a genre piece. Um, but good nonetheless, loads more fun than I've made it sound. Uh, so those are my weeks so far. I'll be moving on. Still got some things to look at in the um, Anything Goes week next week. Also, had a field trip to Fantasy Con in Chester. So uh, Chester is a, an old city that's at the the other end of a sort of um, local metro line, if you like, from where I am. You need to cross water to get there. So it just seemed like it was so easy to go to. I thought I'd get a day ticket, go down. I can meet Dave Braseski, um, other friends as well. That happened. And I can give you a little glimpse of it. It's not an extensive kind of vlog, but I really enjoyed myself. Came back with a load of books as well. Um, so there might be a haul video at some point, um, plus things I'll, you know, things that might even find their way into a cult detective October. So we'll finish with that after I say goodbye now from the present. Goodbye. Okay, it's heading down to the train station to get down to Chester, which I almost can fall out of bed and get to fantasy con and uh, here we are in the autumn right so made it work Made it to Fantasy Con. Here is the Occult Detective Magazine desk. And here's Dave and Jilly. Finally met them. Hey. So this is the dealer's room. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. <laughs> oh how beautiful.